Case Customer Creations is sponsored by Bits and Bits. Use the code JBates to save 10% off your next router bit or CNC bit purchase at bitsbits.com. A couple months ago, I was one of the bajillion other people online who Xtool approached and said, hey, you want to be part of our marketing campaign? So if you'd like to pause the video, I'll put a bunch of information on the screen that you can read regarding uh, our little contract, I guess you could say. So no, I did not get this machine for free. I am paying for this machine uh, by making three marketing videos for them. The first one, which is this one, is the introduction to the machine. So I'll tell you about the machine, show you a bunch of stuff that we've made with it, and uh, just give you my overall impressions on it. I don't want this to turn into like a tool review, just an honest impressions on what, what we've experienced over the past three weeks since having it. The second video is going to be on making woodworking projects with it. That's self-explanatory. The third uh, video is, I think, going to be the most interesting, and that's making money with it. Now, if you followed me for any length of time, you probably heard me say that I don't make anything to sell. I It's just not the way my business is structured, and everything that I make is for personal use or to gift to friends and family. Uh, so there's that. So how are we going to show making money with it? Well, my wife, coincidentally, fell down the rabbit hole of this thing is amazing. She really likes the process of laser engraving and how fun it can be and how creative it can be. That's one thing that's really exciting for me is it's kind of opened up this door of creativity for her. And for me to witness that on the outside, the, you know, the secondhand witnessing that, that is... That's exciting. I really, 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 really like that. A lot more interesting stuff that I'll share in the third video, which is making money with this machine. So introductory machine. Let me grab my notes really quick if I can find them, uh, because there's a lot to talk about. I just had it in my hand. It's just, just the story of having a shop. My shop apparently ate my paper, but I know how to screenshot it and send it to my phone. So uh, hopefully this isn't too distracting. Before I get into the information about this machine, I want to tell you my background. So for me, I thought it was going to be an easy process to pick this up, and it has been. Um, based upon my experience, I've got a lot of industrial experience with CNC machines as well as CNC machines here in my own space. I've got a very large CNC machine in my shop right over there. This laser engraver is essentially a CNC machine, essentially. Um, so and I have a, a CAD degree, computer-aided drafting and design. So uh, there should be no reason for somebody with, with my background to pick this up very, very easily. So it would it be difficult for you to pick this up? Well, on the other side of my coin here, we have my wife, who has zero industrial experience. I wouldn't say zero, very, very little crafting interest before going down this rabbit hole where she's like, She's deep in that rabbit hole of crafting and making stuff. It, it's, it's all, it, anyway, that's fun. Uh, and she has currently, for her whole life, zero love for computers. So with that being said, she picked this up and she can do it. She can run it very easily. I don't know if I said it. I think I did. All this stuff is her stuff. She's rocking and rolling with it. So if she can do it, you can do it. It's very, very easy. This is a 55 watt CO2 laser. Uh, from my, I'm, I'm not a laser guy saying that, right? Uh, from my initial experience or, or research with lasers, the most common three seem to be a fiber laser, a diode laser, and a CO2 laser. There's probably more. There's probably some in-between mixes, maybe. I don't know. But this is a CO2 laser, 55 watt, powerful enough to cut through some very thick acrylic. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, I have not cut through anything super thick because I'm of the mindset of I don't want to test anything simply to figure out its capabilities if that information doesn't help me with what I'm doing. So I've got no need to cut anything super thick, so I've not tested cutting it super thick. That's just the way I'm, I'm approaching things is I'll only test something if it helps me with what I'm going to do in the future. Uh, this thing can cut at 600 millimeters per second as far as the engraving speed, not cut. I, I misspoke there. It can't cut that fast. It can engrave that fast. Um, so that is when you are, you're actually burning an image or burning a design into a material, piece of material, uh, which depending on various other settings, how many lines per centimeter, how much power is actually being output by the laser, it, it all plays into how fast you can get the job done. It's very similar to in the CNC router world, your feeds and speeds and your step over percentage and your depth per cut. It's just power, power uh, percentage, speed of, of engraving, how many lines 
per centimeter and also you can you can set it to run many times over the same pattern if you just want to layer it down as far as the burn goes uh, so that's actually pretty fast as far as uh, the 600 millimeters per second in the co2 laser world from what i've gathered anyway this does have air assist meaning there is an air nozzle right next to the uh, right next to the laser where it comes out of the machine and that is to blow some of that smoke and stuff away from the laser where it's actually doing the work. I, ha again, have no experience with, with lasers that don't have air assist, but supposedly that makes a much cleaner cut. The bed size is 26 by 14 inches. That's the bed size. The actual working area is just a little bit than, than that, a little bit smaller than that. I think it's around 23 and a half by 12 and some change. Maybe it's 13 and some change. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, so that's that's a fair amount of space to batch out a bunch of stuff. We haven't really done many super large items, but I really love making templates and jigs here in the woodworking world. So we made a bunch of a uh, bunch of templates and such for various things to batch out many at a time. So this is one of her products that she's batching out 10 of at once. So you have the bed space to do a lot of stuff. Uh, also, this is... I'm scatterbrained and getting off my notes here, but this is just uh, one eighth of an inch hardboard, tempered hardboard, it makes for really, really good template material. It's pretty durable. Uh, and a full sheet of this, a four foot by eight foot sheet is only $13. Uh, the only downside as I'm experiencing right now is tempered hardboard has a lot of, I, I guess it's got a lot of glue in it and uh, it makes a lot of really nasty resin all over stuff like pitch and resin down on the, the bed of the machine, as well as all of the edges are really sooty when working with this stuff. So it's not really a good finished product material, but it's really good for utilitarian type stuff. So yay for that. The machine has a pass-through and uh, not the machine itself, the riser base. So here's the machine, this is the machine, this is the riser base. These are two different products, right? This riser base does not come with the base model of the machine. I think that's uh, important to note. Uh, but this, this riser base has a pass-through. So you can have a door open in the front, door open in the back, and pass larger materials through it. So you can do stuff like engraving on thicker materials that won't fit inside the bed. Or you can do uh, something like um, pull a long piece like a sign through with the conveyor so down here on the bottom underneath all this other stuff i do have the conveyor and some rails i'll, I'll talk about that again in uh, just a second actually back to the past the whole pass through uh concept uh there's a little bit more to explore there because because this is a pass through therefore the bottom of the machine is empty the bottom of the machine is wide open so if you didn't have this base, of course, I've seen a lot of people, you know, build some type of riser structure themselves on the sides and just put larger items on the bottom. So let's just picture in the woodworking world, sawhorses. Technically, I wouldn't do this, but technically you could put this on a pair of sawhorses on either side and put some large item in from below. You can do that because the bottom of the machine is wide open. So there's a lot of marketing videos uh, on curved surfaces. Again, that's on the list too. Uh, but like something like a guitar side, like an acoustic guitar side, you can engrave on that. Obviously the acoustic guitar doesn't fit inside there, but you can put it, you can insert it from below. So that's kind of an interesting feature. Again, I have no need for that right now. So I haven't particularly done that personally. There's two cameras on this machine that I want to talk about that I think that's really, really cool because I have a CNC machine. Like I said, I have a, a four foot by 10 foot CNC router. It's a kind of a big machine. And I've had the idea, several other people have already done this, to put a web camera of some type of camera on the ceiling. That way, if I put some irregular shaped slab on my CNC machine, I can take a picture and drag it and crop it, whatever I gotta do to put it into my cam software to know the exact boundaries of that irregular shaped slab. It's an idea. Several people have already done it. Never got around to doing it. And honestly, I've worked around it so many times that I don't think I actually will. However, on this machine, it's really interesting that there's two cameras built into the machine, built into the software. You just click a button and it automatically populates an image right where it needs to be. So you have a 
a wide angle overall image. So if you put down four, five, six different things um, that are irregular shaped, maybe you don't have them lined up perfectly, you can just take a picture and move your vectors right on top of that picture before you cut, which is so convenient. It is fast, it's integrated in the software, and I really, really like that feature. Now, if the, the further away you are from the center of that image, the more parallax bites you in the butt. If you're not familiar with what parallax is, it's the change in appearance based upon the lens position. So for example, if I put this phone right here, it looks a certain way on the camera. But if I put it right over here, it looks totally weird and distorted. This, this phone looks like it's the same size as my face, my whole head. It's obviously not. So that's, what, that's parallax. You're getting a different view or different perspective of the image based upon the location of the lens in relation to what you're actually looking at. Now parallax has bit me in the butt a couple times on this because I wasn't doing my due diligence to check it with the second camera, which is close-up camera that you can manipulate after you do the overall image. What you'll realize is the further away from the center of the bed you are, the more that the image shifts just slightly, which makes sense. So you can put your finger on the screen and say, this is the edge of my material, and then use your close-up camera to zoom in right there, and it'll shift over like a quarter of an inch or something like that. So keep that in mind that the wide angle image is great, but it's not flawless. And honestly, I don't think they can make it much better than what it is because it's working really, really well considering the circumstances. Automatic surface 3D scanning. This thing can scan irregular shaped objects and create a mesh of that surface for you to put your vectors, your design on top of that mesh and then as the machine works, it'll change the z-axis height to go over or inside of that irregular shaped object. I've not tried it, like I said. It's super, the concept of it is super interesting. Uh, and I think that'll allow a lot of personalization to stuff that you typically wouldn't see personalized in the creating world. Uh, so spoons, bowls, sides of guitars. I saw somebody engrave something onto a football which was pretty darn interesting. Uh, so I haven't done that. It is super interesting though. I mentioned batch engraving or batching stuff out with the use of templates. I showed you this one I have over there. My wife is actually in the process of a large order with this particular template. So you can batch out a lot of stuff easily with templates, uh, but you don't necessarily have to create a template to do a lot of the batch engraving stuff. Now, if you're doing like 15 of something small, and you're only doing that job once, it doesn't really make sense to make a template for something like that. Templates are very handy when you're doing over and over and over and over where you have to load and unload, load and unload many, many, many times. That's where a template really, really shines. But let's just say 15 of the same object. We did uh, Christmas ornaments and a batch of those. You put those onto the bed and you can line up your vector one time and there's a button on there, I think it's called Smart Fill where it automatically detects the rest of your duplicate items and it'll take that vector and it'll automatically populate it onto those vectors and what's onto those items. And what's really cool is if one is twisted, it'll twist the vector appropriately for it. So that's, that's actually pretty interesting and pretty cool. Rotary work. So like many other engravers or laser machines, I guess, they have rotary attachments. This one is the rotary attachment with the chuck setup. So this particular one has a chuck right here that you can use. You can take this chuck off and inside this opening, which you can't see because it's black and dark, uh, there is a belt in here and you can put two different rollers onto this platform so you don't have to use the chuck. If you have a cylindrical object, you can just set it on top of the rollers and it'll spin it around. Chucks are handy for stuff like uh, tumblers and mugs and cups that are irregular shaped. Uh, so it does have the rotary attachment and that's something else that she's been putting to use quite a bit. I'll just grab one of these really quick. I already taped the name off so you can't see it because I think this is a gift. But you can put tumblers on there and engrave those. And that process, I will say, setting it up the first couple times is crazy fiddly because you have to figure out the process of where you need extra support with some other rollers, where you need to actually grab the object itself, 
Do you need to shim the base of the object if it's tapered like this? Because simply putting it on like this, we have a tapered surface. So then you have to shim it up so it's level. There's a little bit of fiddliness involved with setting up the first time or two, uh, but you'll quickly realize that there's a lot of jigs that you can cut out on a flat surface, uh, on the flat bed of the machine to help you line everything up properly going forward. So uh, I actually have a friend of mine 3D printing a, a base that'll change the um, angle of the rotary very, very easily. And once you have a, a, a designated base for the rotary, uh, you can set up a jig, like a corner jig in the base. So you position the rotary at the same spot every single time. And then the base will allow you to... Anyway, there's jigs that can make the process a lot easier. It obviously doesn't come with them. But there's a lot of things you can do with the rotary. We've only done tumblers so far. Um, mostly my wife. I'm, I'm kind of the, the grunt and the on-site technician and the vector helper guy. <laughs> uh, so she's done a lot of this stuff. But it's interesting you can do rotary. You can do, uh, I've seen the, the glass sphere uh, rings. Oh, let me show you a project. So this is, uh, this is not something that I created as far as the rings go, but it was done on a laser engraver, and you can do that same work on this particular engraver. So this ring right here, it's a very small ring on a chisel handle, and you can laser engrave it. This is something that I purchased years ago that was done on a laser engraver. That's my business logo, Jason Custom Creations, on the uh, rings for the handles that I made for these chisels, right? So there's attachments for this rotary, some three small little metal arms that you can put small stuff like this in and you can engrave these rings. I haven't done it yet. I've got some of these coming in the mail because I really do want to do this, especially from a friend of mine, make, uh, make some gifts for him. Uh, but that's that's an interesting thing that I've yet to explore on the rotary. You can do so much with it. It's it's the rotary, in my opinion, is the most exciting aspect of it because I guess because my um, initial excitement about flat work is not what it used to be because I've got a lot of CNC experience that I can cut stuff out all the time. It is it is really really nice cutting smaller stuff out on the laser versus the CNC because you don't have to hold it down as 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 much. You don't have to um, clean up a lot of the, the fuzzy edges or anything like that. So it's fun in that regard, but I'm really looking forward to exploring the rotary personally. Let's talk about safety for just a second. So there's a couple safety features implemented in this machine and one that I just find absolutely laughable. And I'm going to call you guys out on it because that is so just horrible in my opinion. Okay. So there's a couple different safety features. Obviously, when this machine is running, you don't want to open it. It's creating smoke. There's a laser going on that you don't want to look at. So you can look through this, this, this uh, tinted glass on top and see what's going on. But when it's running, there is an internal lock over here that prevents you from opening it. That's an obvious safety feature. Another safety feature that doesn't come with the machine, but is an add-on on the back side, there's a port where you can add a fire extinguisher setup. So if a fire happens to happen, I believe that fire extinguisher will automatically put it out. Uh, so that's a pretty cool safety feature. Not included, but it is an add-on. I don't think I would ever need that because just like a CNC router, don't leave it unattended when it's working. I, there, an accident happens in a blink of an eye and it's always unexpected. You can very easily, and I have, create a fire with a CNC router. I actually did it in my own personal space as well as on the job in some industrial space. Crap happens, uh, neither of which I don't think were my fault. Software just glitched, right? You can do that with this, or it can happen, I guess you could say, with a laser engraver. Maybe you got a bunch of parts in the bottom of the cutoff tray down below the actual cutting surface. It's a laser. You're throwing stuff down, sparks, and sometimes a little bit of a flame here and there. It can catch fire. It's never happened to me. I've never had any situation where I thought that it was catching fire. But it's a possibility, just like that seatbelt. You don't you don't wear that seatbelt because of the amount of times accidents accidents happen. You wear it for that one time it does happen. So let's talk about an an emergency stop button and how silly. I don't want to use the word stupid, but I just did. How silly the implementation is on this one. Woodworking is my thing, so I have a whole shop full of tools that could very easily just change your life in the blink of an eye, less than a blink of an eye. 
Uh, accidents are a reality, and I like emergency stops on all of my machines for obvious reasons. But the thing is, they have to be in a place where the operator in the operator's position can actually use them. I, doesn't that make sense, right? So table saw. As I'm using the table saw in the table saw operator's position, I can very easily use my knee, my thigh, to shut the machine off. That's the off button. That's the emergency stop. It's right there. This is the bandsaw, and from this operator's position, I have access to not only the emergency stop, the actual off button, or down below, you can't see it, there's a foot lever that I can use to turn the machine off. Three different ways to turn this off. But sometimes bandsaws are used from the backside to complete the cut. You start over there, walk your way around here, and you pull your material through. You can still use your off button, your foot switch, from the operator's position. This is a jointer. You stand right in the middle, right in front of that logo, and you can reach the off button right there. You can turn the key off if you want to do that. But that entire red bar down there at the bottom is the emergency stop, or it's the stop button. From the operator's position, three options to shut the machine off. I'm at the operator's position, and ooh, laser beams, and something's going wrong. Oh my gosh, there's a fire, or something crazy's happening. Where's the emergency stop button? It's nowhere near right here. Oh, it's on the side of the machine. Okay, let me smack it. Oh, it's recessed into the machine. It's recessed into the machine. It's not proud of it, so you can't really smack it. You have to be precise with actually pushing it. That is dumb. That is, I think the say, <laughs> it's comical to me. I think the safety feature was honestly implemented simply to check the box and not necessarily to be an actual safety feature. That might be harsh. Hey, you can knock me for that if you want, but um, in an environment of potentially dangerous machines, I don't understand it. That safety feature, that this, this emergency stop should be up here at the top. Maybe even in the back over here. That would be okay. And, and proud. Definitely has to be proud. I think that the overall aesthetics of the machine was put in front of the safety feature right here, which is the emergency stop. You know, I covered everything on my list, but I forgot to mention one thing that's not on my list, and that is this smoke filter box right here. So this box has the exhaust air coming out of the back of the machine into the top of this box, and then this box exhausts it on the back side. Uh, this is handy for almost necessity for um, doing work inside the home. We have it here in the shop, and it's never gotten too obnoxious of a smell in here while running that. You can definitely smell what you're cutting a little bit, um, but it hasn't really gotten bothersome. I have an exhaust fan in my shop wall. I could always turn on if it gets a little bit obnoxious in here and clear that out. Uh, but I would consider something like that, whether you go through them or whoever else, almost an absolute must if you're doing this inside. Yes, the machine does have an exhaust fan built in. Uh, this has another fan system to pull that air further and then filter it into your environment. That being said, we have been running this machine a lot over the past three weeks. And I'll put the stats on the, on the screen. You can see what uh, uh, the current time usage as of right now using this particular machine in less than three weeks. Almost, but less than three weeks. We've used it quite a bit. And during that time, we have completely clogged up one of the pre-filters. So that, that, that smoke box comes with... Uh, two pre-filters plus a couple other type of media filters below it and this completely clogged up. Now I think it's because we were using a lot of that hardboard I mentioned earlier which is just really sooty has a lot of I think it's got a lot of glue and resin inside the material itself so that's going to be a lot of sticky smoke. Um, but also I don't know if you can see it right there in the center you can see the silhouette of a circle right? I think there needs to be a little bit more of an air gap between the top of this filter and the top of the uh, box on the inside. And that will allow this to sit a little bit lower. Therefore, air coming in can reach the entire top of this filter. Because I think what's happening is the air is just being hit right into the center of this. And if, it's, if, if this is the opening of the air intake and it is pressed up against the filter, then all of that dirty air needs to go through this particular spot before it can go to the side and then come back down through the others. 
So if this little section right here gets clogged, the rest of this doesn't matter. That may be the way I initially had it installed. I may have not pushed this down all the way. Uh, we switched over to the second pre-filter that it comes with and all is well once again. So I can't speak for the lifespan of that particular unit, but I will say that um, I think it does a pretty good job. When we move this into my house, which we are going to do sooner rather than later, so I can get my shot back, um, I'm going to exhaust that air outside. I still want that filter box because I don't want to be polluting my backyard where my kid might be playing or my dogs might be running around uh, because that's the window that we're going to be using is just pushing it right into our backyard. So I'm still going to use that even though I'm exhausting outside. The machine's pretty cool and I've went over I think all the specs for the machine. So what have we been doing with it? I want to show you a couple projects that my wife has been knocking out. Uh, some of you guys may remember these pieces as just trash from the bench build that I made, benches I made a little while ago. My wife turned them into charcuterie boards or serving trays or whatever. Uh, masked the names because I think this is a gift. So it can do real thick, big materials like this. This is an uh, inch and a half thick poplar and it cut it just fine. I did sand this after the fact, but it cut it just fine. Uh, she did a couple of those. She has a bunch of these pumpkins going on where she's cutting out letters to go on top of them and selling all this stuff. I'm not a salesman. My wife has all this networking with friends and family and coworkers from previous jobs and this group and that group. And she's a social butterfly. I'm not. <laughs> so she's selling all of this and everything that she's sold, which is quite a bit, just through word of mouth and networking with her friends on Facebook. I'm building her a website. It's not up and running yet. So that's not any help right now. She has no social media press presence whatsoever as far as pages as far as like business status and she's staying busy so network you can get all kinds of stuff done uh, she's painting and then engraving letters on top of stuff those are selling quite well she's doing of course tumblers like i showed you tumblers let me show you one of my goof ups here so there's a nice little tumbler that's done pretty cool right uh, this one this i was changing some settings trying to trying new feeds and not feeds and speeds that's cnc technology terms uh what's feeds and speeds it's power and speed and lines and number of passes uh so i was trying all this stuff and trying a different way to hold one of these tumblers and as you can see a nice little fire truck and right at the end this job took so long because it was way too fine of a settings right at the end it fell off of the truck i was so upset holding this thing out of the machine, cleaning it up like all this time wasted. It's the machine's fault, yada, yada, yada. And then I look at it and I think, that's not how you hold a cup. I loaded the file upside down so it didn't even matter that I didn't properly load it in the machine because fire trucks don't drive on their roof. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, so yeah, it's not foolproof. You still have to not be an idiot. This was the very first thing that we did. My daughter was interested in it, still is. And she said, Daddy, can we make a sign for the school? And I said, well, what do you want it to say? And she said, welcome to school. I said, okay. And she said, can you make it pretty? And I put this vector around it. She, I said, is that pretty? She said, yeah. And she said, can you make it hang from my door? Okay. So we put these little holes up here for some uh, string. Cut it out. She's like, oh, that's so cool. Set it. She's four years old. Set it down and went and played with something else. Played with the boxes that came with this machine. So that was the very first thing that we cut. Super easy. And this was... This is a scoring path, by the way. So you see all these like darker area areas and lighter areas. Well, as the machine starts this cut here and or scoring cut here and accelerates, it's the fastest right about there. So it's not as deep. And then it gets darker over here. This is just some default settings. We haven't tinkered with anything when I made this. So this this design, this whole thing can change its appearance based upon the settings you put in there. So that was pretty fun. Uh, we live next to Mississippi State University and their mascot is a bulldog. So a generic bulldog vector we found online, Christmas ornament little tree cookies. These she's been selling a lot of, super basic. And you can batch these out. You load up the whole tray in the machine and just batch them out. Super basic. Um, and she got this big job, not this particular design, there's a big scratch in it so this is a this is a test piece and a business logo but she got a big job for these 
light up signs, 150 of these. Where did she come up with these jobs? So that's pretty cool to do. And then uh, I, I am in the process of designing and making an urn for my dog. My dog was 14 years old when she passed recently. And I want to put her image there. So I tested with some just basic settings on oak. And that needs some tweaking. But that's, that's pretty cool that you could put an image on stuff. Uh, speaking of images on stuff, canvas. So I like the look of this particular look right here where it's just a light burn on white canvas. And canvas material is pretty cheap, so doing a bunch of testing here. And I think I had all the settings dialed in perfectly to do a big one of the doggy, my doggy Cleo. But I noticed that my vector was all messed up or my image was all messed up. I didn't trace it properly, so I stopped it. And I was like, ah, that sucks. But I can use this for testing further. So you can do out on canvas as well. Uh, you guys remember Sean Stone, an old friend of mine, a good friend of mine, uh, that used to be in a bunch of my videos, used to do a bunch of YouTube stuff, right? Well... He got out of the YouTube world and uh, started an alarm company business. So this is his business, Alarm Pro, little leather keychain, right? So this, I want to show you this example particularly. This is a scoring cut, not a cut, it's a scoring path. So it traces the outside of the vector. And you can take that same thing and fill it in for an engrave. And that's what this side is. This side is where it fills in. And this is the one where it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, like 600 uh, millimeters per minute or something like that. The speed I mentioned earlier. So same logo, that's an engrave, that's a score. Same, uh, another fun little product that she's been making and selling. She's got a bunch of these up here. And then what else did I want to show you? Uh, dog chains, or what are they called? Dog tags, keychains. She's been wide open, she's been creative, she's been crafting all kinds of stuff. Uh, enough to where we had to make this tray to hold 40 of these to load and unload the machine. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's fun watching her go down this rabbit hole, which we'll discuss numbers and really get into depth on the third video, which is actually making money with one of these things. So whew, I think I covered a lot of stuff. Hopefully I covered everything about the machine. If you want to learn more about it, obviously go to xtool.com. There's all kinds of... Um, sales that they're running currently and, and throughout the year. Uh, I'll have a link down in the description to an affiliate code of mine. If you want to click through that link, it'll support what I do. If you don't want to, that's totally fine too. It's not the subject of this, or not the point of this uh, video. Uh, that's it. You guys take care. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you in the next video.